Welcome back to She Got Game, a celebration of women in gaming. I'm Chelsea Castorubius, I'm a sophomore, and I'm the I'm a multimedia studio major in our fine arts department, and also the inaugural president of Morgan State University's eSports program. Hey everyone, I'm Ashton Wilson, a junior multimedia journalism major, and if you haven't seen our last episode of She Got Game, a celebration of women in gaming conversation with The Game Hers, co-founder Miss Verda Monley, then make sure you watch the replay via the Morgan State University eSports YouTube channel. If you haven't watched one of our conversations before then, you will notice that we have a new theme song. A new song was the new song was produced by senior business major Jaden Pearson, also known as JP. For those who are watching for the first time, the She Got Game, a celebration of women in gaming conversation series was created and highlight for the phenomenal women who are doing amazing jobs and doing things in our, in our gaming community and also provide information on many ways so that people can enter in the gaming industry. Today we will be talking to Ms. Charity Phillips. Charity is the account manager for the MEAC Conference eSports program. For those not familiar with the MEAC Conference, the MEAC Conference stands for Mid-Eastern Mid Athletic excuse me, Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference and is one of the 350 Division I NCAA athletic conferences that exists. The schools who are currently a part of the MEAC uh, eSports program is Morgan State, Delaware State University, Howard University, Coppin State University, South Carolina State University, University of Maryland Eastern Shore, North Carolina Central University, Norfolk State University, and Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University. And now that we have a little more information about the MEAC conference, let's get to Newark. Let's get into our conversation with Ms. Charity Phillips. Welcome. We're so glad to Welcome. have you here. Welcome. Yes. Hi. So. <laughs> So we would like to start off to um, let us tell us more about yourself and what you do and everything that has got led you up for here. All right. Uh, well, my name is Charity Phillips. I'm the account manager for MEAC Esports. Uh, I am a alumni of North Carolina Central University uh, with a bachelor's in social work. A um, little bit of how I got with MEAC. So um, I was a transfer student. Uh, to NCCU, and um, we were trying to start a, a esports club. Um, so um, we got it started, and I was helping with the Discord. And um, John reached out to me uh, and said, "Hey, you know, uh, Miak is looking for an intern that could help with Discord." Um, and I was like, "Okay, well, uh, get me a meeting and let's go with it." Uh, so I met Sonia Stills. Uh, so um, after having a conversation with her, I was an intern with Miak Esports. Uh, that was in February of last year. Uh, fast forward to about May of last year, uh, Harina Data uh, decided to hire me on as an account manager for MEAC Esports. So uh, um, now it's a full-time job for me and, and I love every bit of it. Right now, was there any pushback from family or friends due to them thinking that, you know, games were just a waste of time? No pushback. Uh, my family is full of gamers, <laughs> uh, all the way up to my grandmother, who's 63 years old, and plays Super Mario Odyssey. So um, we're, we're a family full of gamers, and they were extremely happy that it was something that I, I have a passion for. Really funny, because <laughs> like you know, like you said with the, um, your grandma playing Mario Odyssey, that must be a trip, especially if she would have rage or something else. That would be funny. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> <laughs> so our next question would be, you know, you like you said, you were interested in doing esports, and your family has a background in video games. How did you um, get into streaming? Because I know you do um, the streams, the streams for our MEAC uh, competition. So how did you originally get into streaming and esports in general, like playing video games at a competitive level? Um, so my streaming started in about uh, June 2020 due to the pandemic, of course. Um, I was on YouTube and just looking at videos and I saw what got recommended to me was uh, GDQ, which is a speed running event. And uh, one of the episodes that I watched was that they were speed running Sonic the Hedgehog. And that was my very first video game when I was three years old. They beat it in 16 minutes and I was like, what is this? I'm, I'm interested. Uh, so, you know, I started doing some more research, was Googling speed running. Um, that's where I found out about Discord um, and uh, met some people there, um, joined the Super Mario 3D World Discord um, because that's one of the games I play on my Wii U. Um, fast forward to meeting uh, some streamers um, that speed run. Um, 
Thus, I started my uh, streaming in about June of 2020 um, and have been streaming ever since. Um, as far as esports is concerned, um, I, this is my first time playing competitively. Um, I don't normally uh, do that. It has been interesting, though. Um, I've learned quite a bit, especially with COD. Um, uh, but as far as my own personal gaming goes, I speed run Mario games very fast. So that's kind of what I've been doing recently. Uh, now that I've graduated, I've been doing um, what's called uh, practicing for what's called a 602, which is uh, the 100 percent of four games from Mario. Um, and um, hopefully if things go well, I'll be running that in June. So. Uh, that'll be a fun little experience. To, to Can you just tell us a little bit about um, your journey in creating a club at North Carolina Central University Esports Program? Oh, man, that was actually fun. Um, so uh, what we ended up doing was we made a Discord, um, and then we got uh, reached out by Community X. Uh, you know, there's an alumni, Chris. Uh, he graduated from NCCU. Um, so he had hit me up and uh, uh, asked me to give him a list of uh, stuff that we wanted in our esports lab as far as equipment. Uh, so I, I gave him some recommendations of some PCs and, you know, some streaming equipment, um, some gaming systems. And lo and behold, uh, a couple weeks later, um, they were able to let us use the student union uh, room. Uh, and we actually were there for like a day and, um, you know, built the tables, I built the tables, I set up the PCs, set up the, the streaming equipment. Um, and, and that was a really, really fun experience to really be hands on and actually, you know, uh, be able to make that. Um, I haven't quite been in their course uh, since then because, you know, I graduated, but I do plan to go there again once I go back to graduate school uh, this uh, May, actually. So I'll be returning back to NCCU. Sounds like you better have fun back on campus now that you have you've built this program that you built with your own hands and having that support from community and you never know like what connections you may have just based on the school that you graduated from like like you said with community and having also a fellow alumni that's interested in supporting this dream uh, and the investment so it's amazing that like literally something that you started up with your own hands you get to be participated back into it so I would want to ask more about like. How how involved and how how much of your role like how big is your role in the Miac currently in our Miac in the um, Miac esports community? I play a big role. Uh, my job is to make sure that uh, the students are being heard when it comes to league play. Uh, I make the leagues. I make the tournaments that we do. Um, I make sure that everyone has their schedules, um, and uh, I sh of course stream all of our um, play for the weeks leading up to the tournament. Um, so yeah, uh, very big role. And I also take care of the Discord and, and social media. So um, busy days, but I, I enjoy doing this. This is like a dream job for me. Um, I, I never in a million years thought I'd be doing something uh, as far as gaming was involved. Um, this is like a dream come true for me. Awesome, that's great to hear. Um, next question. So this was the inaugural year for the MIAC Esports program. Um, what have been some of the highlights? Uh, some of the highlights. Uh, we did the uh, CCEL tournament with our All-Stars team. Uh, we had the Corday event, which uh, my business, Saburashi Communications LC, sponsored the MIAC bags for that. Um, so I did get to, to go to a couple of the universities and, and see Corday uh, debut his album and play some games. Uh, we've done a Madden tournament uh, showcase with uh, some of the um, football teams uh, uh, that's part of MEAC and basketball teams. Um, geez, we've, we've done quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> this year has been uh, fantastic, and, and I hope that we keep going and keep growing as the years go by. sounds like like what you're saying describing like with all the schools that are being coming involved and you traveling it seems like a lot of fun and it seems exciting for you like major big steps for you and even the students who might be soon be able to join in to do traveling across so I would also want to ask like what is currently like the landscape looking like for our colleges or universities that are across the country for MEAC right now uh, so right now we're trying to uh, 
come up with other programs that we can do to get more of the colleges involved. We're working on doing a summer program this year uh, where it will involve high schools. Um, so that way, you know, incoming freshmen for the fall can already be, you know, aware that there's esports on campus. Um, in the fall, uh, we're going to do our, our, of course, our regular season play. Um, hopefully trying to put some new games in the mix that a lot of our students have been asking for. Um, that's pretty much it so far. Uh, we're, we're still, again, in the planning periods of it, but uh, just stay tuned. There'll be a lot of announcements definitely in the summer. Awesome. Thank you, Charity, for sharing that. And I appreciate that you're creating spaces for students to start gaming. Um, so do you have any advice for students who are currently um, and or who currently don't have any esports programs at their schools but would like to create one? The best thing to do is uh, get a group of friends that want to help you with this and, you know, just start a club. Um, at NCCU, it's student ran. Uh, so, um, you can, you can go to the student services and just say, Hey, you know, we want to make this club. Um, what do we need to do? Um, and, and that'll get the ball rolling. Uh, another thing is to make a discord, you know, make a discord, have one, uh, event link, go ahead and spread it out across campus because the more people involved, the, the better chances of the school getting on board. And that's, that's one of the biggest things is, is the school getting on board with, you know, the whole esports thing, because a lot of these schools think, oh, it's gaming and kids are just playing video games. There, there's nothing into it when there's absolutely so many opportunities in, in, in esports. So um, definitely start Discord. Definitely get your friends involved. That's that's a good start to get esports going on your campus. That's some great advice. I also want to ask for a little bit more advice of like, how do, would you try to get people who are kind of against going onto the Twitch platform or even those who are like, who think who or who believe that you can only be a part of the program because you play video games or you're only strictly playing video games? Like, how do you believe, how would you approach other students or even other people who are interested but don't quite want to play video games in general? That's a very good question because uh, I'm one of those people a little bit. Uh, I mean, my my degree is in social work, which has nothing to do with gaming whatsoever. Um, so the thing that I tell people is that, you know, um, it's not just about the gaming. There's journalism, there's communication, there's business, business administration. There's there's so many other things that you can do with your degree uh, for esports and you don't have to think of a, a controller at all. Um, so what I normally tell those people is, you know, um, if you've got a degree in journalism, uh, maybe you could be a broadcaster uh, and do panels or something or, or write um, uh, stories of the eSport club and what they're doing, you know? Um, that's what I normally tell people. Uh, again, uh, a lot of people, games, you know, don't think, think that they, you know, you have to, you know, gaming is a waste of time. Uh, and it's not, you know, again, so many opportunities, uh, so many different things that you can do with your degree to be involved, just like the person that's playing on the controller. Yes. So I'm kind of interested. I'm intrigued. So you you graduated um, from NCCU and you're you got your degree in social work. So do you have any plans on incorporating your degree with esports? I, I actually do. Uh, that's kind of what I was doing today, uh, believe it or not. Um, I was looking up how to uh, open my own private practice uh, just to see, you know, what licenses I need, you know, as far as a social worker. Um, so my plan is to uh, have some sort of esports tie in with a little bit of therapy and substance abuse counseling somewhere in there. Um, it's probably going to be a private practice sort of thing. But I want to make a space, especially where I live. Um, for uh, students or even just kids in general, um, uh, especially with all the violence that's been kind of going around. Um, I, I recently, as of last week, lost a, a cousin. Uh, he was 17 years old. And um, one of the things that I thought about was if maybe he had a space where he could, you know, a safe space where he could play games and meet other people, he wouldn't be out in the streets doing what he was doing. So my goal is to try to make a space where no matter what your age is, kids can come and play, or even if they don't play, they can learn how to, you know, write the articles or learn how to stream or uh, set up overlays, something that can help, you know, 
produce streaming or, or any events towards esports to keep them, you know, busy. I really like that idea. It's very beautiful that you say that involving your degree into um, playing uh, video games. Because even with people who do art therapy or even just uh, like other ways to do their therapy, that, that is very beautiful because there is a lot going around even in the DMV area with stuff like that, with the violence. And then people, unlike people who are teenagers who are in high school going through this kind of stuff. And it's very, it's like gives like a light of hope basically for you trying to create that space for somebody or even those who, who believe that they're not being seen or heard. So I would like to, um, I would like to ask another question is like, if for that future, that hope, like that hope, like what hope? Ah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so like for the future that you believe, that you see for these kids, um, how would you? What future do you see for MIAC and how they can help and support even the kids who are in high school who are looking up to the college students? What um, future do you see or what hope? Get, what gives you that hope of like they're gonna succeed? Um, so my hope is that you know we can get more high schoolers involved. Uh, you know, the college students could be sort of a mentor and a guide to get them to, you know, find their home in esports. Um, th that's what I foresee in the future. Um, I definitely want to not only tackle just high schoolers, uh, you know, I also want to get to the point of middle schoolers. So it's kind of like a chain effect, you know, they're, they're starting young and then they're working their way up to college, you know, and, and have some sort of, of pathway, if you will, of what they want to do with their life. Um, Hopefully, you know, as I continue to work with MIAC, uh, you know, be able to th grow the platform, be able to grow the uh, the league side of it so that we can reach out to other schools that might want to be more involved um, or want to join, you know, esports. And, and that way, again, create more safe spaces for students uh, around the world. That's, that's my goal because I want to help anybody and everybody that I can. Oh, thank you so much, Charity. It sounds like you are doing great work. We want to just encourage you to keep doing what you're doing. And again, we just appreciate you for sharing your journey and all the important insight. And thank you all for watching this week's of She Got Game, a celebration of women in gaming conversation with me at conference account manager, Miss Charity Phillips. You can also stay up to date with the Morgan State University esports program by following MS at MSU Bears Esports on Instagram, Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter. And also subscribe to our YouTube page where you can watch the replay of this interview with, with Ms. Charity Phillips and others that, we've, that have happened in the past couple of weeks. You can connect with me at through the MSU Bears Esports Instagram or through my personal Instagram at, at champagne.chels with two S's. And you can find me on Instagram at Ashlyn J. Wilson underscore. Again, thank you all for watching. And remember to protect, protect the cave. cave.